As a medium, video games have one defining trait which sets them apart from nearly all other mediums. Agency, or the ability for the audience to interact with the piece in some way. This definition of agency is quite broad, as all sorts of games offer varying levels of agency to their players, but for simplicity, I'll split this into two categories. Narrative agency and ludonarrative agency. Ludonarrative agency is something which nearly every game has, aside from a few edge cases like pure visual novels, and it's the ability to affect change in the game's gameplay systems. For example, in Celeste, the player is given a set of controls like moving left and right, jumping, dashing, etc., all of which are examples of ludonarrative agency. As you can probably tell, ludonarrative agency is oftentimes insubstantial when it comes to narrative, but I'll get back to that. Narrative agency, on the other hand, encompasses the player's choices that directly impact the game's story. A straightforward example of this comes through in games like Fallout New Vegas and other Western RPGs, which are focused around giving the player great control over the outcome of the game's story. The way this happens is generally through dialogue with the game's characters, where you can accept quests, learn more about the game's world, or deepen your connection with the characters. Ideally, by the end of the game, your actions have a tangible impact on the story's conclusion. What makes these sorts of choicey stories so powerful is the way in which these two types of agency are able to interact with each other, and how they can build off each other. Western RPGs are essentially the peak when it comes to this sort of interactivity, with your choices and dialogue feeding into what quests you'll end up receiving and what places you'll end up exploring, which feeds into what factions you side with and what NPCs you end up killing through the game's combat systems, which is all ideally accounted for in the scripted content, which further feeds into what choices you'll be faced with later down the line. Choice is a powerful storytelling device, and the scale of stories we are able to tell while still injecting player agency into the equation has expanded dramatically as stories in video games have evolved over the years. However, as that evolution has taken place, we have run up against very clear limits on how much agency we can provide the player with. In fact, another way to look at the split between those two types of agency is that narrative agency is that which must necessarily be limited in order to allow reactivity in the game's scripted content. In the example of dialogue with NPCs, the player is not actually speaking to the game, and they're not even typing out responses to the game. Instead, they select for a predetermined list of responses to the NPC, and the NPC responds in their own predetermined way, and this repeats for however long the conversation needs to be. It's called a dialogue tree because it's all mapped out in advance across the branches of potential conversation. This is not a limitation born of free artistic expression, it's rather one created out of necessity. Barring a future where all our games work off the Microsoft or Google Cloud with AI learning such that we can create fully synthetic personalities to have free conversation with, this is the only way to feasibly simulate a conversation without spending decades mapping out every possible combination of letters and the character's responses. But a more important limit is the way in which ludonarrative agency is capable of having an impact on scripted content. For most games, gameplay is by definition emergent, with a practically infinite number of game states that would need to be accounted for and reflected in the story. It would be unreasonable for any game to precisely react to the exact way the player moves through a level, though there are some ways this can be approximated. For instance, you can change some dialogue depending on time taken in a level, or how many deaths the player takes in a level, in order to feign some level of sentience on the part of the characters. Essentially, when you can reduce the practically infinite possibilities of emergent game states into something approximating a binary, you can have a scripted response to that binary. But there are some things, like writing full sentences into a computer, that the computer simply can't extract meaning from, and thus can't be accounted for in a scripted context. This is why narrative agency needs to exist, because we don't live in an ideal world where computers have the same comprehension skills as the human brain. So games need to severely restrict the player's possible direct interactions with the story so as to not reveal the game for what it is, a computer program. Until we can provide absolute agency to players, we will need to delineate between these two such that we can maintain suspension of disbelief in these stories. And on this limitation in particular, I came across an interesting case study on how liberating players too much could have an adverse effect on a piece's narrative, which comes from Chicory A Colorful Tale. Chicory is a game that does most things conventionally well. The game looks great, and the art style really sells the idea that the game takes place inside a coloring book. The characters all have really nice visual design, and the dialogue is pretty well written too, with some glaring exceptions which I won't go into in order to stay on topic. The game obviously sounds great, owing to a soundtrack by the much-lauded Lena Raine, 
The game's exploration, paired with an emphasis on simple yet satisfying puzzles, gives the gameplay a 2D Zelda feel that is very engaging. These are all aspects that Chicory nails with a great deal of confidence. Though on story, it's hard for me to separate the narrative's positives from what I found so odd about the game. So let's get into that. Chicory is a game about drawing. It follows the player character who first steals, but is then granted the brush that allows them to bring color to the world. Drawing on the landscape is a very important mechanic, as the puzzles and exploration are built around the use of the brush and the paint it creates. So obviously, the game uses this mechanic to tell its story as well. The story of the one chosen artist, the wielder, who bears the burden of coloring the world, as well as the stress that places on them. Throughout the game, the player is given a couple mandatory and a great deal of optional opportunities to paint for themselves on a blank canvas. There are two instances where the player must do this to continue the game. One where you paint the previous wielder Chicory by her request, and another where you paint a self-portrait, which is customary for every new wielder. And when you're done, the characters comment on your work. You may be able to see the issue already. The act of painting these portraits are examples of ludonarrative agency, wherein the player has an overwhelming amount of control over the outcome, with some simple limitations like a limited color palette and a rigid grid-based drawing system. Drawing, much like typing out full sentences, is a type of ludonarrative agency that, in the context of conversation or sharing one's drawing with a character, must also be a form of narrative agency and needs to inform the reactions of the game's characters. Chicory is incapable of doing this, so it instead makes an attempt to pretend like it can. The most the game can account for is your most used color, which is one of the few things the program can analyze objectively, and past that is entirely scripted praise that is not, and could not possibly be informed by the player's actions. The extent of your interaction with the canvas could be a single dot right in the middle, and the characters would still find something to praise about it, regardless of the prompt you are given. Chicory is already a game that carries with it a strong and unwavering affirmatory tone, given that it's a story about overcoming stress created by social pressure to succeed. The game is filled with many scenes dedicated to combating this sort of anxiety, with the boss fights working as manifestations of the pressure put on the wielders, the song at the top of the mountain serving as a meditation on the character's need to become a better me, and the numerous real talks that the player character engages in with Chicory as they take on the wielder trials. And I understand the role that these free painting sections serve, as simply another way to strengthen this tone through unconditional praise of one's work. A lot of people like this, that warm, fuzzy feeling you get when someone sees something in what you've created. I like that feeling, which is why I make these videos to some extent. But I can't say this game worked for me in this regard. This may be an example of the way stories can get worse the more we think about them, but I think the way that the game praises your work for things it couldn't possibly comprehend significantly cheapens that feeling, for me at least. And it doesn't help that the game is happy to put your work next to the work of a professional artist made in a professional illustration tool. For me, it steps over from affirmatory into patronizing, which is a feeling I deeply dislike. But I understand this is an extremely subjective matter, and I'm in the extreme minority here. Besides, the game would probably be much worse off if there were no opportunities for the player to paint for themselves on a blank canvas, and having the game judge your work through an AI would entirely compromise the tone it so clearly wants to evoke. In that way, it's not really the game's fault, both due to the inherent limitations of its medium, as well as the inherent worth of these moments in the context of its story. So I wouldn't think of this as criticism of this game in particular, but I'd prefer to simply present it as a case study in this area of narrative design and choice at games. But aside from that, I'd like to end with an alternative. I think that as much as we can think of these as limits on what we can do with games, there's something to be said on embracing them as a feature, more so than a bug. Think about the scene where you and Chicory paint portraits of each other. Maybe, instead of showing their paintings to the other, in the name of working around limitations, it would be better if Chicory declined to see your painting. It would alleviate this issue of the limiting nature of the medium, and I also think it could fit in thematically as well. Seeing as the game is all about overcoming social pressure and public scrutiny of one's work, I think there would be value in showing a scene where something you make isn't necessarily put out into the world, that creating for yourself is sometimes a perfectly valid way of going about the artistic process. It wouldn't fix every instance of this in the game, but I think it would be a step in the right direction, and it would even benefit the game thematically in my opinion, showing a perspective on art and artistry that is strangely absent in the game as it is. Even if it is a compromise, we've been working around these limits for decades now to tell stories through games, and I don't think there's a good reason to abandon that just yet.